Few films have resonated as strongly as Schindler's List. While making the 1993 landmark motion picture, director Steven Spielberg realized he wanted to do more to share the story of those who survived the Holocaust. Just a few days after winning the Academy Award for the film, Spielberg established the USC Shoah Foundation, the Institute for Visual History and Education, to collect and preserve survivor testimonies. To mark the 20th anniversary of Schindler's List and the establishment of the USC Shoah Foundation, Steven Spielberg and Universal Pictures opened their archives to create a fascinating illustrated book combining the behind-the-scenes story of the Oscar-winning film and the Foundation's incredible work. The name of the book, Testimony, The Legacy of Schindler's List and the USC Shoah Foundation. As we welcome you back to America's Forum, I'm J.D. Hayworth. And I'm John Bachman. Joining us right now to discuss this is Stephen Smith. He's uh, the director of the, the Shoah Foundation at USC. Mr. Smith, thanks so much for being with us. Hi, good morning, John. It's a pleasure to have you here on the show. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this book. We're 20 years on from the movie. Just watching that clip from the trailer, uh, it brings back so many emotions. That movie's so powerful. But for folks who are familiar with the movie, what is in this book that they might not know or might learn? Well, actually, when Steven Spielberg made the film Schindler's List, um, there wasn't the typical coffee table book, you know, the making of Schindler's List at the time, because Steven was very keen not to um, you know, create memorabilia around the film. Um, so, in fact, the first uh, half of this book will be um, pictures that were taken on the set at the time, a fascinating collection of uh, behind-the-scenes photographs of the making of Schindler's List. It's beautiful to see uh, you know, how just how uh, in that whole set was constructed with the with the actors and one of the interesting things of course was that from time to time on the set there were holocaust survivors including um one or two survivors that knew oscar schindler specifically and personally um around whom the, the film you know centered so you, you get a real behind the scenes look at the the actors talking with the survivors and that sort of thing no. the second part of the book is is about then the the project that came out of the film and the creation of the Shoah Foundation's Archive of Testimony. Stephen, what about your personal involvement with the book? You outlined the two portions of this uh, new volume. What, uh, in what ways were you involved with bringing this book about? Well, I've been the executive director of the Shoah Foundation for five years, so of course I didn't get to know uh, all of the things that happened in the 15 years prior to me being here. And so what I've been doing is working with all of those people who've been involved uh, not only with the making of the film, but the making of the USC Shoah Foundation and the collection of the testimony to describe how, after the making of the film, Steven Spielberg set about to collect over 50,000 testimonies of Holocaust survivors from around the world, actually from 56 countries in 32 languages, and brought all of that content from around the world, gathered it up in this amazing archive um, at the Shoah Foundation, and all the steps that were taken, because it was almost like a, a, a gargantuan um, filmmaking process in its own right with filmmakers, you know, videographers and producers all around the world collecting this, this body of evidence. Uh, Stephen, you mentioned how some of the Holocaust survivors were there on the set and the descendant from Oscar Schindler uh, as well, somebody who worked with him. You know, one thing, you know, when you see those behind the scenes documentaries or books about the, the way movies are, are made, especially when it relates to an historical event, uh, as this one does with the Holocaust, you hear about the emotional ties that, that the actors have by getting into character. Do we get any insight on what it was like for these actors to reenact these horrible scenes with the Holocaust survivors there on the set with them and the emotional roller coaster ride they must have gone through? Yes, we do. And in fact, recently, it was very interesting you should say that. Um, one of the key actors, of course, was Liam Neeson, who played um, Schindler. And he was recently just doing a, a, in Philadelphia a short uh, introduction to the, a, a special screening of the movie 20 years after. And he described to the audience just the impact that being on that set and, and playing that role and, and meeting all the people involved it had on his life and continues to have on its life. And it's surprising, you know, we, we see these as sort of works of entertainment and um, you know, that are just there for people's interest and pleasure. But uh, actors who are involved in this type of historical um, reenactment and um, you know, it has profound impact on the way in which they themselves relate to those histories uh, many years later. Stephen, I want to return to something you were pointing out earlier, and that, that's the sheer volume of stories 
from different survivors. Uh, and as always, it, it seems to be a real challenge, uh, whether you're producing a, 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 a story on American television or a novelization or a, a motion picture, finding the right stories. How difficult it, was it to, to cull through the stories, if you will, and edit and determine which, which stories of the Holocaust would go into this book? Well, that's a really good question. So the first thing is that... Um, when Steven Spielberg was talking to survivors on the set, um, and in particular, one lady said to him one day, when, when he was discussing with her about you know, the, the set at Auschwitz, she said, Mr. Spielberg, I don't want to tell you just about this one day in my life. I want to tell you my whole story. And I think that's when Steven realized that every one of those witnesses had, you know, it was almost like a, a, each of them was like an individual documentary, you know, a whole life history that they could tell. And indeed, the testimonies all run to average over two hours each. So the first thing what he wanted to do was to create a repository where everybody could tell their own story in their own words with no editing and no alteration, just everything that they wanted to say. Well, Steve, we're coming up then, against the, uh, the break here, and to continue on the, with that question, I wanted to just give you an opportunity to talk about the foundation. Obviously, these stories are worth preserving, and that requires uh, some resources here. So go ahead and talk to us about uh, the Shio the foundation and what people can do if they want to participate and help out and preserve these stories. Uh, yes, so the come. testimonies are preserved at the University of Southern California. Our key effort right now is to take those testimonies and take them into the wider world to make sure that they, uh, our children in our secondary schools and our universities are, are seeing them. So you can go online and you can see the Shoah Foundation's website. If you Google it, you'll find it. And there's lots of opportunities there to participate. Um, but first of all, in terms of taking this content to your community and to young people, lots of local programs for that. And if you want to participate in any other way in helping to resource it and, and help it on its way, there's ways to do that there on the website too. So please do take a look. It's, uh, it'll be a very exciting journey for you to see what's there. Well, Stephen Smith, Executive Director of the USC Shoah Foundation, we thank you for your time and your insights on the new book, Testimony, the remarkable story of Schindler's List, the even more remarkable story of the Holocaust survivors who helped collaborate on this gripping tale for future generations. There is more ahead. We love to have your comments. You can weigh in via Twitter at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's.